Long before she became known for her various roles in American Horror Story, Sarah Paulson was struggling to get noticed in Hollywood. This talented actress is criminally underrated, even today, and it's absolutely astonishing when you consider the magnitude of her talent. We'll talk about why she's had so much trouble breaking into the industry and what helped her finally get noticed. We'll also discuss what her life has been like and what her relationship with girlfriend Holland Taylor means to her. Get ready to see Sarah Paulson in a a whole new light. By now, it seems as though everyone has seen the movie Bird Box. Some probably also tried out the infamous real-life Bird Box challenges, but none of you. You're all too smart for that, right? But there is at least one person who hasn't seen it. It's the actress Sarah Paulson who actually appears in the film. According to Sarah, she simply doesn't enjoy watching herself on screen, so she doesn't watch any of the movies or television shows she's become famous for. When asked about the film, she was happy to attribute its wild success to the acting talents of Sandra Bullock. Being humble can be a good thing, but it can also be detrimental to a career in Hollywood, where those who thrive on self-promotion tend to excel in the industry. But long before she was dreaming of being a movie star, Sarah Paulson was a little girl whose parents were going through a messy divorce. At age five, she and her younger sister accompanied their mother to New York City, while their father remained behind in Florida. The three women made their home in a tiny apartment in Queens, and Sarah's bed was simply a mattress on the floor. Although she prefers not to speak about this difficult time of her life, Sarah has admitted her home life growing up was complicated. Her mother worked long hours as a waitress, trying to put food on the table for her two young children. While taking writing classes whenever possible, Sarah too found comfort in the arts and claims she was fortunate to have English and theater teachers who were full of compassion for her. Although Sarah was young, she felt these teachers treated her with respect and helped her through a difficult time in her life. Sarah claims this helped her learn how to build rapport with people far older than herself, and she became comfortable in their presence. Despite her complicated home life, Sarah has always always greatly admired her mother. With two young children and only being 27 years old herself, she moved to New York City where she didn't know a single person. Sarah has called her mother her hero, but notes that her father was still in her life. She would spend the school year living in the city and then head back to Florida to spend some time with her father during summer vacation. Trying to make it in show business can be exceptionally difficult, but Sarah seems to believe everything happens for a reason. While some stars achieved fame while they were remarkably young, Sarah believes she was fortunate not to be discovered too soon. As a young girl, Sarah would fantasize about becoming a movie star, but she believes if she had achieved her dream earlier, she wouldn't have truly been able to appreciate it. Learning that you have to earn what you get in life is a hard lesson, but according to Sarah, it's definitely one which is worth learning. Struggling so hard to get her career off the ground taught her the value of being prepared and the importance of commitment. She also feels her failures have taught her to appreciate and savor all of her successes in life. Although she would occasionally get work, appearing in movies such as The Other Sister, What Women Want, and Held Up, Sarah noted she would often have to wait for years between roles. Many of her peers were hoping to play charismatic and popular characters, but Sarah was willing to take on any part she could get. Regardless of what role you first remember seeing her in, Sarah herself has a strong opinion on when she made it in Hollywood. It was when she played the part of Mary Epps in the movie 12 Years a Slave. Sarah described the character as a really hideous woman and calls her portrayal unapologetic. According to Sarah, she knew some friends who refused to audition for the part because they felt the character was too despicable. But Sarah wasn't afraid of people viewing her as the character and threw herself completely into the role. For a long time, Sarah too had fallen into the trap of wanting to look like a stereotypical star. She had always greatly admired actress Julia Roberts and felt as though she had to look and act just like her if she ever wanted to make it big. But Sarah has grown far out of this idea, and now she has a very different vision of her success. She spent her early years incredibly desperate for work, but now is able to pick and choose which projects she finds interesting. This, to her, is the epitome of being successful. Sarah has compared the early days of her career to feeling like a football player on the bench, waiting to be put in. But this is definitely her season, and in addition to Bird Box, she's also had roles 
roles in huge movies like Ocean's 8, Glass, and The Post, and she's still not worried about playing likable characters. She claims she's interested in what makes them human and brings her trademark intensity to each part she takes on. In addition to being talented, Sarah has also been quite lucky in her life, a fact of which she is well aware. In her 20s, she visited a dermatologist about a small mole on her back, only to find out it had developed into melanoma. Sarah never imagined something like this would happen to her when she was a young girl playing in the Florida sun without any sunscreen. However, she was lucky it hadn't yet spread to any other parts of her body. If she had waited as little as six months before getting medical treatment, it could have been a complete disaster. Her dating life has long been the subject of speculation, which is something Sarah finds rather amusing. She believes her romantic life is the least interesting thing about her and doesn't quite understand what all the fuss is about. In her youth, she primarily dated men and was even engaged to playwright Tracy Letts for a short while. However, Sarah has always been loath to apply a label to herself when it comes to her sexuality. She feels as though proclaiming her sexuality would put pressure on her and her career, and that's something she wanted to avoid. Still, when Sarah is in love, she isn't one to hide it. For five years, she dated actress Cherry Jones, who was 18 years her senior. When the two split up, Cherry claimed it was completely amicable, but Sarah admitted to struggling. She said the two were still close, but were in very different places in their lives. She believes the breakup was easier for the older and more experienced Cherry, while Sarah struggled emotionally. However, the two were able to move forward as friends, with Sarah noting that breakups are inevitably very complex. To add to the heartache, Sarah claims Cherry was the first woman she was ever in a relationship with, adding that makeouts with chicks while under the influence don't count. Sarah says she fell so head over heels for Cherry so quickly, she never even paused to think of the potential consequences. Not everyone was happy about Sarah's dating life, and many wondered if it would harm her career. Sarah was cautioned that dating women could have a detrimental effect on her ability to find work, but she refused to let that factor into her decisions regarding who to date. When Sarah began dating Cherry Jones, it did raise some eyebrows, but people were even more shocked when she got together with her current partner. Sarah admits her choice of romantic partners has not been conventional and believes this is why her relationships tend to make headlines. While she was still dating Cherry, Sarah made the acquaintance of Holland Taylor at a dinner party, who is 32 years her senior. Sarah recalls the first time she saw Taylor, she believed she was probably the most exquisitely beautiful woman she had ever seen. Years later, after her split with Cherry, Sarah encountered Taylor again. They started flirting in a way many of us are familiar with. The two women slid into each other's DMs via Twitter before finally deciding to go out for dinner. Who says technology is just for younger generations? Many people were shocked to learn about their relationship, but Sarah claims she has never had a serious relationship with someone her own age. Some might be skeptical of their age gap, but Sarah believes it enhances their relationship. She claims Taylor's age encourages the two of them to appreciate every moment of time they have together, and adds that it can make the little things seem very small. These two are big picture people who don't get caught up on small details, and they've learned to treasure every last moment they have with each other. Sarah knows some people accuse her of having mommy issues because of her relationship with Taylor, but she believes it has to do with the way our society views age. She says people tend to be in denial about the fact that they too will grow old someday, and looking down on older people is their way of coping. But Sarah doesn't feel this way at all, and instead insists it's a privilege to be with someone older and wiser than herself. Although Sarah feels completely certain about her relationship with her girlfriend, there are still some things which are weighing on her mind. For a long time, Sarah has struggled with whether or not she wants to have children, and she knows the clock is working against her. Sarah has always loved children, but admits she tends to make impulsive decisions. One of her biggest fears is having a child and then immediately regretting the decision. She has been unwilling to make such a huge choice without feeling 100% confident about it. But she also fears she may regret never having children. As a compromise, Sarah has opted to have some of her eggs frozen. This means she has the option of having biological children in the future if she ever feels absolutely certain it's the right move for her. And she wants to make sure it's the right move for any potential children as well. Sarah recalls how her mother struggled and put her own dreams aside in order to care for her and her sisters. While she's grateful to her mother, she knows how difficult being a parent can be and doesn't want 
want to take on the job if she doesn't feel she can do it well. On the topic of having kids, she stated, I don't want to look at my child and say, you're the most extraordinary thing that has ever happened to be, but also the death knell. Sarah has always known what she wanted from her professional life, aside from the brief period of time when she wanted to be Julia Roberts. She doesn't want anything which might hold her back and admits this may be a little bit selfish of her. But Paulson doesn't believe the word selfish deserves the negative connotation that it gets and thinks it's okay to put yourself first from time to time. In addition to the issue of children, being open about her sexuality and relationship is also something which Sarah is torn on. She doesn't want to be defined by who she chooses to love, but she believes visibility is an important topic. She believes it's a benefit if people are inspired by her relationship and acknowledges that it involves a certain amount of hope and risk, but at the end of the day, she just wants to be with a woman she loves. After learning all about her life, how do you feel about Sarah Paulson? Do you believe she's an underrated actress everyone should check out? And what do you think about her romantic relationships? As always, throw your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to The Taco for more videos like this one. We'll see you again next time.